in this tutorial, we're going to learn about a couple of different kinds of mouse and keyboard interactions. By choosing these interactions carefully, you're going to gain better control over the way your program creates interactions. So um, I am on the P5JS reference right now, and we are first going to take a look at the mouse interactions. So as you can see, there is actually a huge list of different possible mouse interactions that you can work with. I would encourage you to you know, go through all of them and, and get a better sense of what's possible. But today I am going to specifically talk about the difference between mouse pressed and mouse is pressed. So mouse press is a function that execute one time when um, the user click on their mouse. So, so here, um, if I come to my P5 sketch, hit play, I um, have a ellipse on the upper left hand side corner of my canvas. I'm gonna implement a function mouse pressed. And I can actually say that when the mouse is pressed, I am going to color my ellipse black. Um, and I can hit play here so that when I press my mouse, it's going to change the ellipse black. And when I release it, it's going to still be black, right? I can also implement a function mouse released, which executes um, basically the moment you release your mouse pressed. So if I write, you know, fail to five five here, what's going to happen is when I press <laughs> on my mouse, it's going to turn black. When I release, it's going to turn back to white. Okay, that's, that's all fine. Um, what if I want my ellipse to be able to move around on the screen? Say if you're making a game or making a interactive piece where um, you know images on the screen need to be able to animate. So um, the natural thinking is I put X plus plus here. So if I hit play, I am going to <laughs> click on my mouse. <laughs> And I have to click many, many, many different times for my ellipse to move forward. And that's because the mouse press execute one time when you press on it. It doesn't continuously detect whether the mouse is being pressed, right? So, so the mouse press function is only good um, for when you need to change something in your program one time, <laughs> you know, one execution of the change um, instead of continuous detection. And in order to create a scenario where uh, we're continuously detecting if the mouse is pressed, we have to use something called mouse is pressed, which is a system um, P5 variable that verifies whether a variable is true or false. So this, in fact, is a Boolean variable. Um, so, so here um, I can do I can do something real quick. I can say console.log and mouse is pressed, right? And I can hit play, and you see that immediately it, it yields a result of false, right? Because I, I'm not touching anything with my mouse, and if I click on it, it's going to say true. And in fact, <laughs> for as long as I click on it it's going to stay true until I release it, right? So, so this is really useful for us if we want the program to be able to continuously detect whether the mouse is being pressed. And we'll just simply put it inside a if statement saying if mouse is pressed, opening, closing, curly bracket, x plus plus. So I hit play here and you'll see that um, I'll you know, hold down my mouse and it's going to move forward, it's going to progress, right? So, so this is, um, this is great and mouse is pressed is used for this kind of purposes. Um, so here I am going to maybe refine my program a little more and create that um, kind of like classic 
um, interaction style uh, that you find in games a lot where the um, the ellipse or the character might follow the direction the mouse moves, right? So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is make the starting position of my ellipse at the center of the canvas. And I am going to further refine um, the condition under mouse is pressed. So, so if mouse is pressed and if my mouse X is larger than X itself, then X is going to plus plus, right? So, so if I'm if my cursor is on the right hand side of the ellipse, it's going to move towards it. If it's on the left hand side, nothing's going to happen. So, in order for something to happen on the other side, you have to write more conditional statements. I'm going to keep filling this in. Mouse x smaller than x x minus minus, and do it for y as well. So if mouse y is bigger than y, y plus plus, and if mouse y is smaller than y, y minus minus, and hit play. So, so if we do this, we can um, actually press and hold down our mouse and move our cursor around the screen and you would see a, the ellipse essentially following you. And it's not going to stop until um, it, the, the cursor matches the center of the ellipse. Okay, so great. Um, let's actually now delete <laughs> everything and start from scratch. So I'm returning to the state where I only have a ellipse at the center of my screen and we're going to take a look at keyboard interactions. So, so under keyboard interaction, there is a shorter list of uh, the possible interactions you can create. Um, and you might see some like, you know, mirroring syntax already. So, so we got key press here, which work in a very similar way as mouse press. Um, let's come back here and let's do function key pressed. And we can say fail zero and hit play. So, so if, if we do this, um, when, we, when we click on a key, when we enter a key on the keyboard, it's going to turn the ellipse into black, right? And if you use key release, um, exact same idea, function key release field 255. Okay, so now any key I press on the keyboard is going to, you know, both like make the circle black when I when I'm pressing it, and also, um, you know, turn it white when I release it. Okay, so um, so now the next step is looking at key is pressed. So if I look in here, and we'll find that this is also a system um, boolean variable and it would either yell true or false. So here I'm gonna try to create a very similar program and I'm gonna say if key is pressed equals to true, then x plus plus. So, so now if I press any key on the canvas, it's going to move my ellipse to the right. Um, okay, that is semi-helpful, <laughs> um, but actually the whole point of using a keyboard is so that you can be more specific um, with which direction you want the, mouth, uh, the ellipse to move, right? So, so what we need now is something called a key code. And the best way to you know, find out the key code is by visiting keycode.info. 
And the way this website works is that you just press on any key <laughs> on your keyboard and you're going to find the corresponding number that you're supposed to use to reference that specific key on the keyboard. So here what I need is the right arrow key. So when I press that, I can find out that, oh, the, the number that represents that specific right arrow key is called number 39. So I'm going to come back here and I can add an additional um, if statement under the condition that if, if key is pressed. So if key is pressed, if key code equals to 39, then x plus plus. So so if I hit play here, it's only going to move right if I if I click on the right arrow key, not going to um, do anything if I press any other keys. And I can now come back and look for my left arrow key. And I'm just going to copy this and say if key code equals to 37, x minus minus, right? And now I'm going to actually add my up and down key as well. So up is 38, down is 40. So if key code equals to 38 y plus plus or actually y minus minus to move up and if key code equals to 40 y plus plus okay so so let's uh, let's take a look here if i now um, uh, press on my right arrow key it moves right up will move up down will move down left will move left. That is all wonderful. However, um, there is an issue here because I can now only move um, in four different directions. <laughs> I can only move up, down, left, right. Depending on which key gets recognized by the computer, um, it's going to pick one of those four directions. And it can't move diagonally if I press two keys, for instance, up and right at the same time, right? So in order for that to happen, we need um, to use something called key is down. So, so here, um, key is down is a function that checks if the key is currently down and being pressed. This is great for if you want a couple of different keys to be able to affect your program simultaneously. Okay, so, so that's exactly what we need um, next. And, and let's take a look at the syntax of key is down. It's a little um, different from what we've done so far. So, so what you would do is type in key is down followed by a parenthesis and insert the key code inside of that inner parenthesis to, to check whether a key is being pressed. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is delete what we got, and I'm going to say if key is down, adding a parenthesis, and I'm going to just remind myself um, to the right is 39, so I'm gonna add 39 there. And I'm going to say X plus plus. So if I hit play, play now, and if I, you know, hold down the right arrow key, it's going to do exactly what that, what that's supposed to do. Um, going up is 38. So I'm going to add a, another if statement and say if key is down 38, Y minus minus, right? So, so here's where we can test this. If I hold um, down my up arrow key, it's going to move up. And if I hold down my right arrow key, it's going to move diagonally. Um, so, so you can now press up and right simultaneously, which is awesome. Um, and you can you know, keep adding the same thing for my down and left key. So 40, and that's going to be y plus plus. And left is 37. X 
x minus minus. So if I hit play now, I should be able to create this more fluid diagonal movement, right? Which makes the whole um, interactive experience more specific and more fluid. Um, so, so these are the basic introduction of working with um, mouse press, mouse is press, key press, and key is down.